and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Wellness Wednesday, and we're here to open your mind. Good morning, Deshaun's. How are you? Good. How are you feeling? I'm feeling... <laughs> I'm feeling wonderful. I'm here. I opened it. my two eyes. God gave me two gifts this morning, so I'm excited to be here. I am really excited, but there's so much going on in the news. Some pleasant things and some unpleasant things that I kind of want to touch on because... You know, y'all, we got to open our minds to living differently in the world. We really, really do. Yeah. And there's so much going on now that, you know, we have Flint, Michigan that I wanted to talk about today, clean water. You know, I'm sitting here with, you know, two bottles of water. I have the luxury yeah. of having clean water. I have the luxury to be to go outside and, you know, breathe fresh air and to be able to walk around and exercise. And I also have the luxury to apologize. So we're going to touch on all of those things mm. today and, you know, open your mind to living differently in the world. I really kind of want to start on, I found this article in Medical Daily. And since, you know, you are my partner in well-being and it uh-huh. used to be pain but you know the <laughs> the workouts have gotten so much easier that it's not really pain anymore <laughs> in medicaldaily.com and it's a, an article about cardiovascular disease they say it's really lowered with small exercise even standing and is beneficial and i know you see this and it came out um, two days ago so it's really important they say doing simple exercises can be beneficial for a person's cardiovascular health they say it's something some of us love and something some of us dread Mm-hmm. It's exercise. Though we're all aware of its positive benefits, the latest research still offers some surprise. The new report published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology finds that even small amounts of physical activity, including standing, is linked to lower risk of cardiovascular disease. You know, the evidence with regard to exercise continues to unfold and educate the cardiovascular ca- clinical community. The greatest benefit is to simply exercise regardless of the intensity whether the and while the danger is twofold because here's here, here's the clincher they say do, to to not exercise at all and to exercise intensely without due preparation mm. and how many of us like to go jump out there without stretching yeah. and not doing anything we just like to go from zero to a hundred and they said that can really be damaging to your heart as well yeah and you know we have Bo- bobby clark on the Bobby Clark Alexander on the line from the ATL. She is my life coach. Bobby, I, I know you're working out in the ATL just like I'm doing down here. <laughs> Why are you laughing? And, and, and I am so excited about it, but Aren't you? it hurts. You know, it really, it really does. But I just heard the tail end of what you were saying about starting, you know, from zero to 60. Yes. And that really is damaging. I mean, it's just not a good idea. Well, the author studied the intensity and amount of aerobic exercise that are more beneficial for cardiovascular health. And they found that moderate and and vigorous exercise can decrease the mortality rate, especially for people in developed countries. Yet they also point out that cardiovascular benefits will level off at a certain point. So I'm sure you see people who don't really feel like getting fit, Bashan. And yeah. I'm sure at this time of year, you see everybody, because <laughs> it's the beginning of the year, everybody yeah. is like, I'm going to go to Tiger Rock Martial mm-hmm. Arts and I'm going to work it off. Yeah, and then you get some people that has never, not say never, but hardly work out at all or hardly ever walked, worked out, you know, period before. And, um, you know, sometimes I, I, I kind of recommend maybe, you know, in the beginning not to start off with one of my intense classes because just that reason. They're that, intense. Well, yeah, yeah cause I, I mean, you, you don't want to, um, you know, for one, you don't get, want to get discouraged, you know, and then want to just jump off the bandwagon completely and not want to work out at all anymore. And two, and for that exact reason, cause you can, you can hurt yourself physically uh, mentally, you know, so inside it, and it, out inside, from what we're listening correct. to, yeah, so, or what we're hearing, yeah. So, um, we, you know, we don't want to do that. So, uh, best thing to do is start slow, and um, you know, whether it's start with walking, and you know, or uh, uh, you know, just doing one of the little chair exercises we talked about last week. You know, you're going to give us a and chair we're exercise give you another one today, this aren't week. you? Yeah. So, um, you know, but just starting slow. You know, um, even if we, I know a lot of people don't like doing the at home workout videos. But, but you have a new 20 minute one, don't you? I wasn't trying to plug that in, but I was. yes, but yes, I do. Uh, and where can but, they get that? Uh, you can find it um, on our website at 
kioexperience.com. That's kioexperience.com. Um, and you can it's only order. 20 minutes. It's only 20 minute workout. So it, like I said, you can do it before you go to work in the morning, after you go to work, during your lunch break. You can get a group of y'all together and, and, and you do it. it yeah, get it together, knock it you know, out. knock it out, you knock know. Knock it out. That's what it's all about, you <laughs> That's know. That's what it's called. Yeah, and, it, and, and it's, and it's a beginner workout. It's, it's for beginners. It, it, it's for advanced. It's for everybody. Um, you know, you just step your intensity up a little bit, but, uh, but you know, it, and if you did it every day, you'd basically get the recommended of minutes because the exactly the recommended of minutes of week is 150 minutes per week, y'all. Yeah. So that's oh, and, 20. And when most people ask me how many times should I work out, I say normally you want to do about two or three classes a week, and that's about that's about 50 minutes to an hour, and that's the recommended doses of workout you should do. Uh, minimum, I will so say. So how many of y'all listening right now are getting that 150 minutes of workout uh, a week? <laughs> Um, and it doesn't have to be really strenuous. No. You could be walking in the nope. park. You yep. know, look how beautiful the weather is. Yep. You yep. know, get out, breathe some fresh air. Exactly. I mean, and just go and, go and play with your children, you know. Hey. You know, some, some of us don't do that. You know, just go take your child outside and go in the park, throw the ball with them or whatever, play basketball, whatever it may be. Playing basketball, especially with kids, man, that Oof. will wear you out. Yes. I mean, I know you probably did with Aiden all that. <laughs> You know, that, that dude there. He wears me out. Oh yeah. Just running around with him, you know. So, um, you know, my son too, same thing. You he know, likes he likes to show, his, show oh, off. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> oh look he, what I can do. I'm look, like, mm-hmm. yeah, he got to show off for the ladies, you know. <laughs> That's a ladies man right there. <laughs> you know, cardiovascular exercises include circuit training, swimming, running, biking, and y'all just walking. When done at least three times a week for an hour each day, these exercises prove to be amazingly beneficial in support of a person's health. Make sure you get out and do, Just do something, man. Something, Bobby. What do you do? Do you do something? You know, and actually, um, I've only been walking. It's been really on the light note. I am easing back, and actually, Bashan, I need to order the video today. So when you see my name pop up, yes, you know, ma'am. get my out. You. you know, R S V P right away. <laughs> you know, that whatever. To you. Because I want to. Um, <laughs> I have to step back up. I told you you guys this year I want to do at least three, you know, K walk races. I probably won't run the first one. But by the second and third, you know, I want to be back running. I used to do it all the time. Yeah. So well, I'm going to do that half marathon at the end of February. Wow. But let me give you some reasons why. Heart disease in the United to be States. There to cheer you on. Yes. I might be in um, the 504. We probably, need everybody to come uh, have signs at the end or throughout. Period. Yes, <laughs> Bring your signs. About 610,000 people die of heart disease in the United States every year. That is one in every four deaths, y'all. Heart disease is a leading cause of death for both men and women. More than half of the deaths due to heart disease in 2009 were men. Hmm. Coronary heart disease is the most common type of heart disease, killing over 370,000 people annually. Every year, about 735,000 Americans have a heart attack. Hmm. Of these, 525,000 are a first heart attack and 210,000 happen in people who've already had a heart attack. And I'm getting all of these stats from the CDC.gov. So this isn't some random information, y'all. This is for the Center of Disease Control and Prevention from... I want to know how many of those right. are from New Orleans. <laughs> right. And how many of those are African American? From Louisiana American? and well, Louisiana, Mississippi. Because I know last time Doc was here, he told us that Louisiana is now is ranked 50. Man. I, you know what? I, I mean, 50, I, I, y'all, we're 50. I only what ask we New do? Orleans because that's where, that's where I'm from and that's where I live, right? So, uh, you know, and, and I'm concerned about my people, you know, in general, you know, but man, we got to do better. We got have to. Absolutely we have to, got to do, have better. To do better. I got to say God, but. Have got to we got have to, do to better look. Is it, you know it, it, you know we need to do we something. We colloquialism. I mean, I'm Go saying, look it up. Are you laughing at me? I'm saying, I know that. No, for real. But that, I mean, you know, it's I, I know we got so many distractions around us, but at the same time, you know, we gotta you know think of it can't be selfish. And what I mean by that is that you know you gotta think about your family sometimes too. It's like. How long you plan on living to being around for your family? Exactly, because you know? it doesn't just affect you. And that's just what we really want, you. Yeah. you know. That's why we're saying get everybody out. Because it yep. doesn't just affect you. It really does affect the whole family. Yeah. And so I wanted to go through a couple early early action is so important. So number one, exercise. But knowing the warning signs and symptoms of a heart attack, you know, really can be your first line of defense. The 
chances of survival are greater when emergency treatment begins quickly. So here are a couple stats. In 2005 survey, most respondents, 92% recognized chest pain as a symptom of a heart attack. Only 27% were aware of all the major symptoms and knew to call 911 when someone was actually having a heart attack. And about 47% of all sudden cardiac deaths occur outside a hospital. 47%, y'all. This suggests that many people with heart disease don't act on early warning signs. So I'm going to give you a couple of those warning signs. And I think Doc Grigg is running up the stairs. But you've been working out, so you don't even – I will get to that. You in a second. I know. Look at him. You know, heart attacks have several major warning signs. So here are a couple of them. Chest pains or discomfort. Upper body pain or discomfort in the arms, back, neck, jaw, or upper stomach. Shortness of breath. Nausea, lightheadedness, and cold sweats. So all of these things can be early warning signs. We want you to pay attention to all of these things. Right, Doc? Yeah, one of the things you have to be aware of, and good morning. Pardon my tardiness. I, uh, I woke up, I ran eight miles this morning. I woke up at 4.30. Mm-hmm. He's making me woke up at bad, 4, uh, actually. We left at 4.30, and we ran eight miles. And uh, I'm a little stiff, a little sore. But uh, I'm, we're running that marathon at the uh, end of next month for Danny. Mm-hmm. Um, the study came out uh, Monday, and it showed that short bursts and reg- short t- uh, periods of regular exercise um, do much better for you mm-hmm. than actual the the long endurance intense training. So get out, get check, get fit, get moving, find something to do, and do it. The, the walking. You were talking about heart attacks. You know, one of the things that we ignore, we always, oh, it's just a little gas. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. so if you have a radiating pain up your up your jaw, uh, if you have a Especially during a, in an event. A lot of times, heart attacks happen in the morning when we're in the bathroom. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Your blood pressure raises when you, you, know, you go to but the bathroom. But you said it's kind of a shock to your system when you're waking up. It is. It's stressful to wake up in the morning. Uh, I've had friends that had uh, one of my teammates and close friends passed away in the bathroom, uh, an aneurysm rupture. Wow. Uh, we need to be careful and cognizant of uh, our hearts. One of the healthiest things you can do for yourself is to eat a plant-based diet. Uh Eat your fruits you just, and veggies. And if you follow Doc Griggs, he just posted something about that. See, you, you underestimate that I read Bam, your stuff, yeah, don't you? you, do, you, do, you do. I read, I read. You um, but the thing is, in, in women in particular, the signs can be different. There are different symptom, signs and symptoms in women, uh, especially African-American women, for a heart attack. It's not your typical chest pain. It could be a stomach pain. It could be a, a nausea. There's a lot of different signs and symptoms. So you want to be on top of it. The best thing you can do for yourself is to eat Eat healthily and exercise. Get checked, get fit, get moving. Mm. So, Bashan, how can we get moving? Give us an exercise today that can get us moving. We was going to do, um, we've done this before, but we're going to do it again. And because, you know, I understand a lot of people have jobs and they're working behind the desk like we talked about last week. So we're going to, you know, um, and, and, and Lee and, and our uh, and Kyle. Uh, Kyle producers, they can join in over there. Since you've been sitting, since you're <laughs> sitting behind day. the chair all day, it is real simple. Kyle just looked like serious. <laughs> yeah, like, seriously. Yeah. Did he really just? We're, we're gonna um, yeah, just, we called you you're out. gonna sit up. I mean, stand up and sit back down. Is you gonna do that continuously, yeah. nonstop, yeah. And, you know, until I until you your legs fall off? Let your, you know. Wait, hold up. Did you say to your legs? But man, look, bro. <laughs> don't start all that again. Did you have me out there breaking board with my whole hand? Try to avoid using. Try to avoid using your hands on like the um. The armrest, you know, just you're trying to use all your your core muscles and your leg muscles to stand up, you know, and uh, keep your feet flat on the floor, by shoulder width apart, and he's going to continue going up and just standing Do up. Do we and, actually touch the seat? Uh, try it. That's there you go. See? So there you go. That's the challenge. So once you get to a point where you could you say, oh, this is too easy, because then you'll feel it Avoid in <laughs> go about an inch off the, uh, you know, before you touch the, the seat again and stand back up real quick. So go down slowly. And then pop back up again. Do it slowly, oh, like you're okay. doing a squat. That's a whole different do it scenario slow. than just sitting down. Yeah, so you go slowly, really slowly, coming down, and then you pop back up. So and there's pop a, back up real fast. There's a commentary I want to give to this. What yeah. you're doing exactly what I tell people to do. Mm-hmm. Um, we we emulate the professional athletes. You know, we yeah. go to the gym, we lift weights, and we run, and we do all this. They're practicing for their job. Exactly. <laughs> right. If your job is to sit at an office all day and you walk. To yep. the bathroom, you walk to deliver, you go up and down stairs, do the things that, that you'll you do, do. Yeah. at work, and yep. you'll be more efficient at it. Does yeah. that make sense? That is a great idea. Uh, exactly. You know what else we should be more efficient at? What's that? Drink some water. Drinking water. Clear water. Clear water. Well, <gasps> I got her to say it. No. I got her to say it. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> no, not trying to be funny. Yeah, clear yeah, water, clear water. Yeah. especially yeah. in Flint. Oh, we, we will here talk. we go. That was a good Exactly. Segue. You like yeah. that, huh? We're going to talk about the luxuries of having clean water. 
We will be right back. This is Wellness Wednesday, y'all. It's not easy being green. <laughs> This is Darlene Carter. Join me every Wednesday at 1 p.m. for my Wine and Dine Happy Hour. I will feature local eating and drinking venues and interviews with local restaurateurs, wine shop owners, local bartenders, and local breweries. So tune in every Wednesday at 1 p.m. for Wine and Dine Happy Hour with me, Darlene Carter, on WBOK, 1230 a.m., Real Talk for Real Times. Gentilly Italian Pies, home to the $5 Family Happy Hour. Specials on pizza, wings, and drinks, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Gentilly Italian Pie does fresh for the entire family. Salads, pizza, pasta, wings, and oven-baked sandwiches. Gentilly Italian Pie offers lunch and dinner in a new, modern atmosphere surrounded by big screen TVs. Dine in or carry out by calling 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. Relax, have a drink from the fully stocked bar or beer on tap while your order is made from the freshest ingredients. Gentilly Italian Pie, 4706 Paris Avenue. It's home where everybody knows your name. So bring the family to Paris and Maribou for the $5 Family Happy Hour, Tuesday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. That's Gentilly Italian Pie. Dine in or carry out, 504-826-9180. That's 504-826-9180. You gotta try the pie. That's the original Italian pie located at Paris and Mirabu in Gentilly. This is Irvin Mayfield. I believe art is often a catalyst to create honest dialogue when words are too hurtful or distancing. Jazz is all about bringing people together, and that's the goal of all of our work at the New Orleans Jazz Orchestra. Blank Lives Matter is our opportunity to create a soundtrack for the moment and facilitate a conversation about this global, complex subject through our art. This newly written music will allow the audience to experience the full gamut of emotions, joy, loss, humor, and pain through the same optimism that you feel listening to a blues song. So join me on January 21st, 22nd, and 23rd for the world premiere of Blank Lives Matter, a new commission work with the New Orleans Jazz Orchestra at the People's Health New Orleans Jazz Market, 8 p.m. Tickets are available at T-H-E-N-O-J-O.com. Relationship Tuesday is going up on a Friday. Sex off at Bullets, 2441 AP Toro, January 29th at 7 p.m. Tickets are on sale now at thegoodlaugh.brownpapertickets.com. Thegoodlaugh.brownpapertickets.com. The Good Laugh Relationship Tuesday going up on a Friday is presented by the Good Life Radio Show featuring Stand Up Nola, combining Relationship Tuesday with the crew Eileen, Uche, Brian, Henry, and Ty, and Friday's The Good Laugh Comedy Hour with comedians Tony Frederick, Matt Owens, and C.J. Hunt. The Good Laugh is comic relations. Buy your tickets online now. TheGoodLaugh.BrownPaperTickets.com. TheGoodLaugh.BrownPaperTickets.com. Come hear what really goes on during commercial breaks. Come get your relationship questions answered live. Stand Up NOLA will say everything we can't say on air. The Good Laugh Relationship Tuesday going up on a Friday at Bullets, 2441 AP Toro, January 29th at 7 p.m. Tickets are going fast, so purchase online now at TheGoodLaugh.BrownPaperTickets.com. Showtime in the afternoon with John Slade is moving to 3 to 4 p.m. weekdays, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Continuing the message with your issues, your news, and your views. Still here on your station, WBOK 1230 AM. Remember, showtime in the afternoon with John Slade is moving to 3 to 4 p.m. weekdays, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Continuing the message on WBOK 1230 AM. Real talk for real times. WBOK 12:30 a.m. The People's Station. Good 
morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Wellness Wednesday, and we are here to open your mind. We are here on Wellness Wednesday. I have the whole crew with me. I have Doc Griggs to my right. I have Bashan Jordan of Tiger Rock Nola to my left. And I have Bob Clark Alexander from the ATL, my life coach, on the line. And y'all, we have an issue. We have a global water crisis that I would love to open people's mind to because I think we take for granted that we can just go to the refrigerator, go in the cabinet, pick up a bottle of water, clean drinking water. Mm-hmm. And I, it's okay. It won't be chlorophyll water today just for you, Doc Griggs. Thank you very much. But if you don't eat your greens, you know, you can drink them, just FYI. Um, you know, water and sanitation is a real issue. So here are a couple facts that I want you to know about. One in ten people lack access to safe water. One in three people lack access to a toilet. Of 663 million people, one in 10 lack access to safe water. Of 2.4 billion people, one in three lack access to a toilet. What would you do? Twice the population makes you think, doesn't it? It makes you feel a little bit more appreciative. Twice the population of the United States lives without access to safe water. One third of the global population lives without access to a toilet. More people have a mobile phone than a toilet in the world. Mm. A review of rural water system sustainability in eight countries in Africa, South Asia, and Central America found an average water project failure rate of 20 to 40 percent. And all of this is found on water.org. And globally, one third of all schools, y'all schools, lack access to safe water and adequate sanitation. In low and middle income countries, one third of all health care facilities lack safe water mm. source. And the water crisis is the number one global risk based on impact to society, as announced by the World Economic Forum in January 2015. So the human body is 60 to 70 percent uh, uh, water. Uh, most civilizations, countries, villages are founded around a water source, including New Orleans. If you remember, it was founded from the river back. Absolutely. Not only are you talking about safe water, but safe access to safe water. Safe access. If, right. you, if you look around, there are people that have to march miles and miles and miles to go to a river to get water, running the risk of wild animal attack. Right, and we Crocodiles, don't need, exactly. hippopotamuses, uh, lions, tigers, bears, oh my, the whole, the whole thing. So it's something that we definitely, definitely take for granted. We cannot live without, without water. Absolutely not. And it's crazy because it's, it appears, and I got this from the Huffington Post, it appears that shame seems to be the only reason that the government officials in Flint, Michigan, have decided to pick up their pace helping the people of Flint. Flint is 37% Caucasian and 56% African American. You know, we kind of remember these numbers after Katrina, right? Mm. Right. The median income for the for for a Flint family is twenty four thousand dollars, while it is forty eight thousand dollars for the rest of the state. Forty two percent of the people in Flint live below the poverty level, while statewide just seventeen percent are below the poverty level. Did you hear me? Forty two percent of the people in Flint live below the poverty level, while statewide just seventeen, seventeen for the whole state are below the poverty level. In Flint, water, safe water, was all that the residents needed. Instead, the local government authorities provided them with poisoned water. Hmm. Poisoned water. They knew what was going on. Flint City Council chose to take water from the Flint River in order to save money, y'all, on the on what they were paying from the water from Detroit. Not only was the Flint River water poisonous, it was so ridden with toxins that it damaged the water's pipes to the point that the lead in the pipes was exposed mm-hmm. and started flowing into the faucets in people's homes. So complaints started coming in immediately, um, which were about April 2014. April 2014, y'all, are we are in January 2016. Now about now every child, about 9,000, and it, the numbers keep going on. It, it keeps going, you know, it, it, it varies. In Flint are assumed to have lead-based poison. Yeah, which can cause all kind of... Especially for the young kids. Developmental delays, uh, <laughs> mental issues, you name it. I mean, it's... It's that's horrible. I mean, I, there's no other word for it. That is absolutely unacceptable and horrible. And we take for granted every day that we have clean water. 
Yeah, I, mm. that it's one has tough. me speechless. <laughs> it's crazy, but if we really think about it, you know, I, I, I was looking over. We have we have another uh, some points I want to talk about with dehydration system um, symptoms because we really do take water for granted. We have it. We have access. At, every day to it. I mean, I know if you watch news and you see it coming out of the faucets, it's yellow, y'all. It, it's yellow, orange, nasty orange. looking. Would you want to bathe in that? And that's their, I mean, that's what they were living with. Yeah. And I, being lied I'm to. Absolutely floored. And the necessity of water for our bodies on a, on a basic level to function. Doc, how important is it, or on a basic level, well, we have to, the need you, for water? Your body can't function. You can only live, you can't, what is it, three, seven days without water? Yeah. Um, if that, you can go without food for a long time. Because there's different sources. Uh, not a long time, but longer. Yeah. Uh, water is vital. We are 70% water. Everything, we are. That's what we're made of is, is water. It's what we need to function and for things to operate the way that they should. Um, I'm just... Tainted water, uh, whether you're bathing in it, you'll still absorb it. Yeah. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, the majority of people were drinking bottled water, um, something that we assume is clean. We don't know and whether or not they could afford it. They are now. That's the yeah. problem, yeah. Right. I, I don't know if they, they had been or not. This is just, I don't know what you I don't say. think it's they just, had been, honestly, because, you wow. know, they kept saying that it was safe and that nothing was wrong with it. But obviously, you know, it was a doctor that brought it to the forefront because she started finding all of these um Issues with the children. The kids, yeah. And they kept telling her, no, you're just trying to, you know, create some hype, some hysteria. And she was like, no, really, this is a problem. Yeah. And so she kept pushing the envelope. But what if she didn't push the envelope? Yeah. How many of us out there are sitting there with, you know, situations that we know better? No, and there's somebody a, who are telling us, no, 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 be quiet, be quiet. Yeah. You have to speak up and say something. Yeah, especially when it affects, I mean, uh, uh, all of us are important, but you're affecting th- these kids that, that didn't ask for it. Nobody asked for this. Yeah. Um, I can't just say the kids, but th- nobody asked for it. It's, it, it's just un- unacceptable. So how can we tell if we are low on water? How can you tell if our body is hydrated? Because you know what, Doc? And we were talking about challenges during the break. I love to start challenges. And so I know it was something that we did with the uh, New Orleans New musicians. Museums, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, water um, challenge. But l- let's do it again just for us. I'm with that. I'm about it. With you know, we're going to start drinking half of our, our body weight in, in water, water again. In ounces. Mm-hmm. In ounces. And, you know, I'm pretty good about it, but I probably fell off with doing, you know. What's well, holiday? It's, it's my holidays season, get it's you. Tough. I know, but you know what? That's even more reason. You know, if you're going to eat the king cake, drink the water. water for something else. If you're going to eat the king <laughs> right. cake, drink the water. It's got you ice. Know, <laughs> right. <laughs> But what's crazy is we do take it for granted, and it's not a luxury. It's not a luxury. It's a luxury for the for the um, residents of, of Flint, Michigan. It's yeah. a luxury to have clean water. Yeah, yeah. it is. You're talking about signs of dehydration. Signs of dehydration include dry mouth, a salty taste in your mouth. Um, if you go to the bathroom and you urinate and it's the color or close to the color it was, the, like it was the first time you woke up, you're dehydrated. If your eye wells are dry, if you have, of course, if you have a dry mouth, if you do a Press on, take your thumb, press on your finger, uh, your middle finger, and count. When you take your thumb off, count one, two. If it takes longer than Uh-oh. two seconds for it to fill up, you're dehydrated. I'm there's, dehydrated. There's a tent test. You can take the skin on the back of your hand and pull it up into a tent. If it stays up, you're dehydrated. If it doesn't go immediately Damn. back, it's called skin uh, skin turgor test. Um, a lot of times you'll get a taste. Like I said, water follows salt in the body. You'll get a salty taste or even a sweet taste. Your body will be trying to tell you that, look, you I'm dehydrated, you get to, huh? Yes, very. If you're, See, craving, you're not feeling well. If you're craving that sugar. But that's what I was about to or say. Or salt. Especially this time of year, y'all, we really take it for granted when you're feeling a little bit under the weather. Un, under the weather. Make sure you're drinking more water. Yeah. Your, your body's in a hypermetabolic state because it's it's your metabolism revved up because you're fighting a virus, a bacteria. The harder you work, you think of your body, literally think of your body like you think of yourself. The harder you work, the more you sweat. The more your body has to work to fight off uh, bacteria, the more it's going to give off water. The more you're going to sweat. You, uh, you get your fevers the whole night. So you need to you need to probably drink one and a half times. Um, not one and a half times, but a little bit, like three quarters of your body weight in water if you're we sick. We tend to drink less water, so especially we, around this time of year, too. Oh, okay. In ounces. Yeah. You want to, want to ramp it up by one and, and I'm really listening because, y'all, yeah. I'm dehydrated. I'm like Three like quarters of your body. Uh, a good rule is three quarters of your body weight in ounces if you're sick. Yeah. Drink till your pee turns clear. Mm-hmm. Clear, y'all. Not green? No, not green. No chlorophyll. <laughs> Bobby, no chlorophyll. If it's green, you're <laughs> If it's green, you're some liver issues. 
<laughs> Look, I'm, I'm reading here that it doesn't take much to become dehydrated. Lose just 1.5 percent of the water in your body, mm-hmm. and the human body is about 60 percent water. You'll start to you notice the tipping point. Yeah, you'll start to really? notice things like your 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 thoughts won't be clear. You'll be able to just mm. you can stutter. And you... I hear it's even more dangerous and creates dis- distracted driving. Mm-hmm. So that's what's wrong with everybody on the road. Oh. Y'all need to, I'm serious. You need to drink some water. Watch out for your diuretics like coffee. Coffee will make you go. <clears throat> and even though it comes out clear, that doesn't mean that you're hydrated. Yeah. Coffee and alcohol will make you go to the bathroom. So if you're a regular coffee drinker, and I'm saying a lot of people listening right now are regular coffee drinkers, mm-hmm. should you be drinking more water? You need or to drink more, yes. does it matter? Yes, it does matter because coffee, again, is a diuretic. It's going to make you go. Mm. Coffee's like beer. <laughs> it makes you go. Alcohol makes you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, diuretics are those things, uh, you know, like hydrochlorothiazide. Everybody talks about the fluid pill. Yeah, coffee does what the fluid pill does. Not to the same extent, but it'll make you go. And you'll fool yourself thinking that you're, oh, I'm hydrated because mm-hmm. it's coming out clear. That's not the case at all. Uh, you, that's free body water. You need to, you need to def- definitely uh, double up in your water. So since I have all of you here, mm-hmm. what – are the effects on your body if you're trying to work out and you're dehydrated? Because we were just talking about that. You were like, if you're not feeling well, rest your body. I hear, a, um, reading here, a 2% dehydration level in your body causes a 10% decrease in athletic performance. Mm. Yeah, I mean, you feel it. You bog yeah. down. When you're dehydrated, you want to stop. If you can imagine a car engine, right? When it's low on fluid, things start, crack, they crack. and they, It's the same thing when you're working out. You have no energy. You hit the wall you ever been running or walking and you get that sip of water and you just feel like ah, it's like yes. a magic pill like yes, yes. <laughs> yes. notice yes. i didn't say energy drinks i didn't say kool-aid <laughs> i didn't say cold drink water 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 yeah. worry about getting your electrolytes later in your meal after your workout with your greens and vegetables and fruits you know what else i think a lot a of people vinegar. take for granted during this time of the year you think oh it's winter it's cold outside my yeah. skin is just dry I just said that mm-hmm. So ashy. is it or being or being ashy? Yeah. Let me put some lotion on that. Yeah, yeah but your body's sucking it up because you need water. 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 Same same way of feeling dehydrated. You don't feel as high dehydrated when the winter time because you know. But you think I, I don't need as much water because I'm not sweating. Oh, but, you are. Uh, yeah. Take off them pocket yeah. clothes. Yeah, you yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. smell worse than before. We have the lines lit up. I have Eric on line too. Eric, welcome to the Good Life. We are here on Wellness Wednesday discussing hydration, the luxuries that yeah, we have yeah. of water. Yeah, God bless y'all. How y'all doing? Good. Good How are you? Good. Yeah, the water in Flint was so bad that the auto parts in Flint, Michigan, um, factories, the auto parts were starting to rest up. Wow. So, yeah. So what are the hospitals in Flint going to do if if the water situation is that bad? Wow. I mean, the question is now, what what can they do other than add filtration systems? I mean, it'll be interesting to hear that story. Uh, I mean, it's it's tough. It's funny that you bring that up. Uh, Eric, because I saw, you know, I read, I was I was reading something and I saw a picture of a Flint hospital, you know, just mm. turning the faucet on and it was like coming out yellow and yeah. orange. So it's, yeah. it's you know, it's everywhere. There's nowhere that they can go and escape it. It's in their hospital. So how are they even but, treating but patients? You saw, that, you saw that already then? Okay. Yes. Yes, I saw that. Wow. So, you know, how do they treat patients? You have to think about, it. I mean, we're taking this for granted. You know, when they're, you know, if there's a fire, you know, they're going to put out the fire and they're turning on the, you know, right. putting the hose on and it's. Yeah, that's tough. Nasty that's water, tough. and then that's everywhere. I, 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 mm, I mean, that's, that's, that's an excellent point. I never thought about the that's tough. System. Right. Yeah. I mean, think about how we use water every day. Yeah. I mean, we take it for granted going to the faucet and being able to turn it on. It's clean. You know, you're just washing your hands, brushing your teeth, taking a bath. Yeah. You know, but, you know, people who are sick or ill, or how are they doing surgeries, and how are they, you know, yeah, I saw a video cleaning stuff and washing their they hands. They opened up one of the fire hydrants. They was just spewing out, like, brown water. Ah. Uh, I was like... Mm. You know, That's we're ridiculous. taking we're taking that for granted, you know. But, you know, I, I have to think that the people also err on the, the side of common sense as well. Mm. I mean, I know it, uh, everyone's affected, but if yellow or brown water comes out of the faucet, people... Come on. I'm not, right, I'm you're not going to do, do it right. But think about how, you know, we're in New Orleans. We've had boil advisories every now and then. You know, we're like, oh, two and three days, and we're like, oh, my gosh, you know. Yeah. This is months. This is yeah. over yeah. a year. Yeah. How do you yeah. function? Did they have they interviewed people to see what they've done? Have they've know. interviewed people? But I, mean, like, I know they're mad about it. But like, what have they been doing? You know, you know, people. When did you, you know the? When did you first notice that something was wrong? What did you do to react? I'm not bathing in the yellow water. Yeah. Right. I'll just be funky doc. I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. 
You know, another thing that's happening too in terms of real estate, people can't sell their homes if they exactly. want to move. No one's going to buy the home. Absolutely, absolutely. It's a, it's affected literally every part of their um, community and their society. So it's something that we really need to, you know, pay attention to. And hopefully, mm-hmm. their uh, government apologizes to them. Thank you so much, Eric. Yeah, for your we call. have to look at what kind of water quality we have. Also, I guess absolutely. all of the cities throughout the nation has to look at this. Absolutely. You know? you know what? When things like this pop up, it's for you to heed a warning and start paying attention. It's mm-hmm. for you to open your mind so we can all live differently in the world. Yep. Thanks so much, Eric, for Back your call. Up. We're going to discuss... You know what we're going to discuss? Apologizing when we get back. Mm. Because that's exactly what their government officials need to do. And on Wellness Wednesday, it's also good for your heart. We talked about our heart this morning. Apologizing, y'all. It's a good life. We'll be right back on Wellness Wednesday. Hello, this is Dr. Gary Clark with Dr. Clark 101, The Living Classroom. Please join me every Wednesday at 12 o'clock noon on WBOK, 1230 a.m. on your dial. We seek to highlight your thoughts and opinions. My show is dedicated to rational and constructive views. Always informative, no issue too small, no question too difficult. Real talk for real times. As a business owner, do you ever wonder how you can gain better exposure to potential clients, not only locally but around the world? The Internet has changed the game for everybody. And whether you're a small mom-and-pop shop, a medium-sized business, or non-profit, it's important that you have a web presence online. We at Peak Mountain Technology Solutions understand that growing your business means more to you than most people realize. That's why we've taken it upon ourselves to offer the very best in website design. We're talking customer built websites that are professionally designed with your business in mind. Websites that are designed to help attract customers to your business. So if you're ready to take your business to the next level, give Peak Mountain Technology Solutions a call today to see how we can help. In addition to website design, we offer a full range of information technology support. So give us a call today at 504-355-8400. Again, that's 504-355-8400. Are you looking for a better way to get fit? Bored with the same old routines? Looking for results or a way to instill discipline in the kids? Tiger Rock Martial Arts is the answer with Taekwondo, kickboxing, and self-defense classes. Tiger Rock diversifies your training in ways that allows individuals of all ages and fitness levels to feel like a champion. Join Tiger Rock today, TigerRockNola.com or 504-455-9694. That's 504-455-9694. With a three-class starter pack, starting for only $38, which includes your training uniform. Learn, grow, and succeed with Tiger Rock's three convenient locations, Old Metairie, West Bank, and Clearview. There's no better time to start gaining strength, skills, and protection for life than now. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. 504-455-9694. See you on the mat. Grammy Award-winning musician Irvin Mayfield and the New Orleans Jazz Orchestra will premiere Mayfield's original composition, Blank Lives Matter, at the People's Health New Orleans Jazz Market from Thursday, January 21st through Saturday, January 23rd. Blank Lives Matter asks whether the need to identify whose lives matter, especially when it's black, reflects our hesitancy to conversations involving race. The suite will consist of 12-tone poems, each focused on a specific person or topic. A tone poem is a piece of orchestral music that illustrates or evokes the content of a story, piece of art, or other idea. Join me on January 21st through the 23rd for Blank Lives Matter, a new commissioned work by Irvin Mayfield and the New Orleans Jazz Orchestra. Reserve your tickets at eventbrite.com or visit www.thenojo.com. That's www.the NOJO.com. WBOK takes it to another level every evening from 6 until 9 with the Reverend Al Sharpton. Keeping it real every weekday evening from 6 until 9 p.m. on WBOK 1230 a.m. where it's real talk for real time.
WBOK 12:30 a.m. The People's Station. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Wellness Wednesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are here on Wellness Wednesday, and I have the whole crew with me. I have Doc Greg to my right, I have Bashan Jordan of Tiger Rock Lola to my left, and I have... Bobby Clark Alexander on the line from the ATL. She is my life coach, and I wanted to spread the word to everyone else. Do y'all know how to apologize? Yes. Uh, that, yeah. that was a resounding yes. 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 Mm-hmm. I apologize. Well, I can say every day. That's not a good thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, being married, you have to know how to apologize a lot. <laughs> And uh, eat the crow. Uh, <laughs> even for stuff you haven't done wrong, that you know. So yes, funny. baby, it's my fault. I apologize <laughs> for everything that I just did. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, you do. Some people don't know how to apologize. Oh. An apology is an expression of remorse for something you've done wrong and serves as a way to repair a relationships after that wrongdoing. Forgiveness occurs when the person who was hurt is motivated is motivated to repair the relationship with the person who inflicted the hurt. A good apology will communicate three things, regret, responsibility, and remedy. Apologizing for a mistake might seem difficult, but it will help you repair and improve your relationships with other. Bobby. Oh, God. You know, I was like, I wanted to send you that little thing saying I can't. You know, I'm yeah. like, wow. Uh, you know this, is, this is huge for two or three minutes, but... I'm going to do the best I can, okay? I'm going to do the best I can. But, Bashan, thank you for the joke. I mean, I love it. Thanks so much for breaking the ice. A lot of men and women found that apology. I said, you know, I'm going to get on the radio, okay? I apologize for everything. Right now, today, no one wants to apologize. And and most people now, Eileen, in the gang, they don't want to even accept people's apologies right that's like the on part. Yeah. an all time high now i'm making money from it now unfortunately <laughs> because people are in crises relationships like in in their marriages Bashan. Mm. um they're losing jobs yep. they're losing opportunity yes they are mm. they're, they're losing their audience and now they want to fix it um when when you don't want to uh, apologize because you felt like someone did it on purpose. We're all human. We make mistakes, and sometimes it is intentional. But I'm finding in it, as I've had to dig and research, you know, the characteristics <laughs> that I'm seeing over and over and over, there's some narcissism in there where people don't oh, want to I be think. wrong. They want to deflect it. It's everybody else's problem. If you know that you hurt someone or if if they even tell you even the more, even if you didn't mean any harm, okay, but if they said it, you, if you hurt them, then you say, I'm sorry, that wasn't my intent, or I'm sorry, it just, this was a bad moment there. It was a heated moment, and I really didn't mean it like that. I'm sorry. I mean, really, <laughs> but people don't want to even come near that. And it's funny that you say that because the first step in an apology is giving up the idea about being right. You know, people argue about the details of an experience that involves more than one person is usually frustrating because everybody's going to, you know, view something from a different point of view. Yeah. Everybody's right. have different right. experiences which have brought them to the place that they are in their lives. So sometimes give up on the idea of being right. Is it that important right. to be right? Right. You no, know, some right. people and go hard. I'm hard. like, is it that important to be right? Mm. I'm like, you know what? Let it go. Yeah. At least for me, I'm like, okay, you're right. Does it make you feel better to be right? Okay, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. And they look at but me crazy. Actually, you They're like, you said you wanted to be right. It comes to as well as what does the individual mean to you? 
For me, right. I'm, I'm becoming more in tune of what's important to me. I've actually, before the year closed, I had about three situations that I actually went to individuals because I was trying to get my circle of five that we talked about, Hello. you know, yep. to run with me in 2016. The thing is, okay, um, you know, you, you feel some kind of way or whatever, you know, whatever I did. If I did something, I said, talk to me. Let me know if there's something wrong because, you know, for 2016, I'm, I'm not going to deal with this. I'm going to take the high road. And I've decided as well, and I'm doing it. I feel great about it. But for people who always want to be right, okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'll leave it at that. Leave it right okay. there. Right. Cut it, cut it short. Right, right, right. Mm-hmm. And they say the next uh, common mistake that people make is when they're apologizing, when they're having a conversation, they always want to say you, 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 mm. you, 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 you. But when you do that, you can't, re- the other person isn't even open to having a conversation because you're going, whether you think that it is um, creating a defensive situation, you are, you are. <laughs> so, you know, you want to make I statements, take I accountability. Oh, okay. No, go ahead. You know, we want to say use I statements. One of the most common mistakes of apologizing is using you instead of I. When you apologize, you must accept responsibility for your actions. Don't push responsibility off for the offense on the other person. Keep the focus on what you did to avoid sounding like you're blaming the other person because you'll get absolutely nowhere. Absolutely. For for one thing, the um, the the you and the communication is where the issues are as well. That's where the deflecting comes in. Um, you have one person sometimes that open, willing to take responsibility. I find myself taking responsibility for something that I know was not my fault, but I say, okay, I take responsibility for, you know, whatever. It's, it's like you take it just so that you can have an open conversation to communicate, to squash it. Right. And so they don't even want to communicate. They want to because they don't want any responsibility in it. And it's also a mechanism of control. And where it comes from, you know, it's fragile egos and it's unresolved issues. It is becoming more and more prevalent. And, uh, you know, Doc Greg said one time that, um, you know, we're, we're becoming smarter and more evolved. But I'm finding that. It, it's almost like a mental illness coming out of this. We're, we're smarter and we're evolving, but we're closing in more on ourselves. We're, we're not good communicators. We don't want to communicate. We don't want to let go of anything. We want to continue to hurt. So when people are really hurting, they think everything is aimed at them. And actually, they really expect for you to say, I'm sorry, 24-7, 365. Everything affects an offense. Exactly. And so when you're also giving the apology... Please don't try to justify your actions. No. Just, just, yeah, just let it go. <laughs> just let it go. I'm sorry, Even but, if you feel um, you were justified okay. in yeah. that mm-hmm. moment, don't give that. Yeah. yeah. Just don't leave offer it, that. Leave it there. Just sorry. leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> what, that unless, they ask, unless they sincerely, you know, actually want to know why did you do that. But, I'm but if you're about sincerely if not I ready to I give the answer. I won't even go into that. I won't even go into that. I'm, you know I'm sorry. What? Which one we did? Don't, don't. <laughs> but here's the deal. If you're not ready, if the person who's receiving the apology, if you don't really want to know why they did it, don't ask, ask them yeah. that. It took them a lot to get to the point where they yeah. are apologizing yep. to you. That's yeah. like stirring yeah. the pot again. If you know, if they're being humble and apologizing to you, yeah. don't go. Well, why did you have to do that? Yeah. Well, then yeah. you know what? You just poke them and hit that one nerve that was left open and they're about to get they're about to answer your question honestly Mm. you asked for it right yeah yeah, yeah, about three weeks ago. I Look, they're all nodding their heads. You know, We've all been in know, that situation. Just, just say I'm sorry. Nothing else is needed. You know, actually, I did. And you're right. Sometimes it's just simply, I'm sorry. Just, I- I'm sorry, and then let it go. And also, don't don't make the excuses for the person. And also, when you're giving an apology, make sure the person is in the frame of mind where they can accept mm. the apology. Yeah, don't apologize while you're still mad. Right. I know oh, yeah. what you really want yeah. to say. Yeah. Mm. That's all you do is say sorry. Oh, you're not sorry. Don't be, you, don't be you, sorry. You don't be, yeah. That's right, you sorry. Yeah, sorry. sorry. That's you, what you're you, sorry. You're sorry. You're sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs>
<laughs> sorry, <laughs> excuse me. Sorry. It doesn't matter what what place you know what headspace they're in. They're made up their mind. They're not accepting any apologies. But as long exactly. as you're right in it, if you really feel like okay, I'm gonna apologize to them, and I'm actually sorry. You know, whether I'm wrong or right, um, don't say that. But whether you're wrong or right, just say you're sorry and make sure it's genuine, and then go on because. If you're looking for some people to say, okay, I accept it, you will be waiting until Jesus comes. So, yeah. Here's another one of my favorites. Don't use the word but in an apology. No, but. but. Uh, but. <laughs> don't, don't use the word but. I'm sorry, but what happened was. I'm sorry, but. But what happened? And we all yeah. know, as soon as I said that, we all had a reaction because you know either you've been on the <laughs> receiving side of that and you're like. Turn around and walk away because I don't want to hear anything else you have to say. As soon as you hit that butt, I already knew you were going left. Yep. Mm-hmm. I knew you were going left. Stop going left. And also consider the other person's needs and personality. Just like said, Doc, I'm sorry, but I'm really looking at the glitter that's still in your head from yep, the uh, yep, from the Baking yep, King. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> See, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. She said it, but you know what she said? She said, "I'm sorry, but." But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. I don't know if I was ready to receive that or not. (laughs) I'm sorry, but. I'm sorry, but for real. But for real. You see it? For real. But she said, but for real. But for real. (laughs) See, because you're not being real when you say sorry, but for real. And the thing is, if you're not sorry, don't say it. Yeah. Okay, that was my last point. But I'm going to let you make it. (laughs) No, you already made it, but. (laughs) (laughs) If you're not sorry, don't give a half. Sorry. Yeah. You know, give no it, sorry, not sorry. Give, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes mm-hmm. I'm sorry, not sorry. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I say it well, no, not right that not to someone like that, but oh. I say it when I when I eat a cookie and I know I'm not really sorry, not sorry. <laughs> <laughs> when you're actually sorry. But like, like when you eat a Pringles. <laughs> but you're not even eating Pringles because you're jogging. Right now. Wow. <sighs> sorry, not sorry. But how you feel about yourself? Tired? Yeah. Yeah. It's a... Uh, it's a journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sorry. I did a 25, that 25K I did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I did it. No, I'm not sorry. I did a 25. I did a 25. It's 15.6 miles. It was, uh, it, you can't skip any steps, even yeah. though you can see the end. Yeah. And it looks like it's close. Oh, yeah. Even if they say it's only a mile away. Oh, boy. It gets yeah. further and further Ooh. away, huh? Every step. Yes, but it, I... And it doesn't get easier with every step towards the end of the race. Ooh. It gets easier as, you know, over time. Yeah. But, you, and there's nothing, you, I can't, I would, there's no magic pill. Yeah. There's no. no genie where you can th- yeah. and get to the end. You have to <laughs> go through it. Just your heels three yeah. times. You got to go through it. You got to go through it. You have yes, to follow indeed. through and see to the end. Yeah, so it's a, it's a journey. Yeah. It's definitely a journey. It's a journey. My clothes are getting big. That's good, though. It's a journey. That's Appetite's not a all problem. I can see different. it. Yeah. I see it all in your face. I know, y'all. He's all, he's all felt. That's, and the funny thing is that, you know, I'm, I am journaling this. So yeah. when people ask, I'm not, oh, man, this is great. I'm running. No, this this sucks. I'm Really, some days I really don't feel like doing it. Don't, and once yeah. you get started, it's great, but it's a it's a commitment. Um, How do you feel after you work out? Though? I feel like I accomplished something. Yeah. Uh, literally, having run eight miles before most people wake up mm-hmm. this morning was like. You feel energized sometimes. Yeah, until you come down. Yeah, well, you about an hour and a half. I'm you up, get that up, high, up, and then yeah. I'm like, man, I need yeah. to take a nap. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's yeah. one of the things we don't want you to be sorry about, you know, falling off your routine. So we want you to make sure that you yeah. get a little bit of exercise in, you know, keep your heart rate up. We want to make sure you drink your water because it's it's a luxury, obviously, to have clean water. Exactly. And we want to make sure you get checked, get fit, get moving because it's very, very important to, you know, open your mind to living differently in the world. Don't be sorry about, you know, falling off the wagon. It's not how you fall. It's how you get back up. What's that saying? Fall down seven, get back eight. Yep. Yep. Well, you know, it could be 9 or 10. It's it's Mardi Gras season. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. so <laughs> I want to thank our King Athena. I know you've been busy. <laughs> shout out to the ladies. We have a king in the building. KOA, the crew of Athena. Yes, shout my out. My peeps, my peeps, my peeps. And I really want to take my hats off to my queen, uh, Natisha Butler, and our former king, uh, Laren Nelson. It's awesome. He, we, I, have, I have a big shoes to fill. Big shoes. When do y'all run? Well, yeah, because you're getting so small now. When do, you, when well, do y'all we, run? we roll down vets on January 29th. January 29th. January 29th. Yeah. All right. It's going Boom. down. And 
We've had some callers call in who are really interested in getting the website for your exercise what? tape. Knock it out. What are you talking about? Everybody wants to knock it out. Tiger Rock. And Tiger you know what? I, I really want to say this really quick um, before we end the segment today, that there has been some break-ins uptown with, Ooh, you know, man. an intruder who is basically watching yeah. women while they sleep and actually started getting into the bed with these women. So, you know, we talk about Tiger Rock, Nola. Say, partner, we talk about, you out there listening, I got one fight. Come on by. Right, I got some fight. Right, right, right. So we talk about all these things, but getting fit and, you know, Know, the self defense classes yeah. and the taekwondo classes really do you know give you that empowerment. Yeah. So how can they get that that um, um, exercise tape? What's the website? Well, the uh, ex- exercise tape is uh, you can go to K I O Experience. That's K I O E X P E R I E N C E dot com um, to order the website. And then um, if you're interested in getting self defense classes, you can uh, call me at five zero four eight three one 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 zero. And we're planning something big for the whole city of New Orleans uh, real shortly. Uh, so looking forward to that with the self-defense classes. So. Yes, because you know what, y'all, being able to take care of yourself and having that peace of mind really is a good life. So make sure you open your mind to living differently in the world. Get, check, time. get thick, get moving. Taekwondo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Drink your water because obviously it's a luxury. And, you know, don't be hydrated. It's a good life. It's Wellness Wednesday. Open your mind, y'all. I'll see y'all tomorrow.